Should I back the Hasbro Haslab Moss Isley Cantina Vintage Collection playset? Hi, I'm Chris Cook, and today I'm going to be explaining everything we know about the latest Haslab project and help you decide if you should buy this four to five hundred dollar toy. Welcome along. And with only a few days left for you to back this project, I thought I'd get something out there to help me and hopefully you decide whether you want to back the bar. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video as since the project launched, there's been a lot of discussion and some confusion about it. And I'll be picking through the mess to help you come to a conclusion. So without further ado, let's get into it. The Mos Eisley Cantina is one of the most iconic scenes in Star Wars A New Hope, and indeed the entire saga. It's where our hero Luke Skywalker first gets his taste of what life is like outside of the small town he grew up in. It's where we first meet Han Solo and Chewbacca, and get a feel for their characters. It's got shootouts, lightsaber fights, and all manner of weird looking aliens. It's a place that both Kenner and Hasbro have tried to recreate before, but with limited success. For those of you new to this or who haven't come across it before, HasLab is Hasbro's crowdfunding program, originally intended to bring otherwise impossible projects to reality. Previous successful projects have included Jabba's Sail Barge, Unicron from Transformers, and the Sentinel from Marvel's X-Men, amongst many others. The idea is that Hasbro get a minimum number of customers, that's you, to commit to paying for the item ahead of time, about 12 to 15 months in advance, and when it's ready, you'll receive it on your doorstep. Look, we're late in the game here, but so as you know for future, if you are intending to back a HasLab project, doing so early does help the campaign. When these projects pass their initial funding goal, it is far more likely that the other tiers will be unlocked as more people are encouraged that it will be a successful project. If everyone had the mindset of, I'm not backing this until it's fully funded, then nothing would get backed at all. From a risk perspective, Hasbro do not collect your money until the campaign has ended. So that would be the 9th of July this year, and they only collect it if it reaches the minimum 8,000 backers. As I mentioned in my previous video, this HasLab is broken down into a base offering and a deluxe offering. Now, here's a quick reminder of the base offering first. Included is the main entrance and steps down to the cantina, the large horseshoe bar itself, three modular alcoves along the left-hand side, archways, a shed load of accessories, and three exclusive carded figures. More on them in a bit. All of these areas have added detail, and in terms of accessories, you will get eight round tables, one large rectangular table, four tall stools, 15 short stools, five single seat chairs, four two seat benches, and eight different types of cups. That's over 100 cups in total. And you'll also get a sticker sheet to personalize your cantina as you see fit. The deluxe pack will allow you to fill out the right hand side of the bar and connect directly to the main cantina, including a fourth wall to enclose the bar. The deluxe version will include everything I mentioned in the base set, plus three additional modular booth sections, five additional short stools, two additional single seat chairs, four additional two seat benches, six additional round tables, and another 20 more cups. We're told that the set will come in classic packaging, and I'm hoping they go for a orangey red fill like the Creature Cantina playset from 1978, but we won't see that revealed until after the campaign has ended. Hasbro have confirmed that there will be one vintage collection styled box for the base version, and for the deluxe backers, an additional separate plain brown box with just the deluxe items in. In other words, if you're a boxed completist, the deluxe set has everything that you need. In terms of figures, the base offering includes three that are exclusive to this HasLab, and Hasbro have said that they have no plans to release them outside of this set. So if you're a carded and loose collector, you will need to back two cantinas to keep your run going. Wur is an entirely new sculpt, and comes with a blaster accessory, a cup, and an alternate cup holding hand. The other two included figures, Bria and Seni Tonica, are making their debut in action figure form. Each will be packaged on their own card back and come complete with two blaster accessories, a cup, and alternate hand. 
As with most crowdfund projects, this HasLab has several unlocks that are included with the set if the campaign reaches certain milestones. Now, whether you back the base offering or the deluxe offering, you will get all of the figures that are unlocked over the course of the campaign, and they would all be packaged on vintage collection card backs. A tier one with a milestone of 11,000 backers, Greedo would also be included in what you get. The figure would be an all new sculpt, come with his blaster and cup, and come on an alternative card back. A tier two with a milestone of 14,000 backers, Nabran Leeds would also be unlocked and included in your set. He features an all new sculpt with his four arms, two special interchangeable mask hoses, one with a shaped S curve so he can enjoy his beverage, and a cup and two blasters. Tier 3 has a milestone of 17,000 backers. Aliel Shus is one of the Wolfmen, would be an all new sculpt and a character debut, and would come with his own blaster and cup. A toy of this size needs characters to populate it, and so far Hasbro have pipelined some characters that won't be included within the set, but will be released in mainline later in the year, with more Tatooine themed items to follow. All new sculpts of Han Solo, Luke Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi are on their way, as well as Chewbacca as a partial new tool, updating his portrait and legs. They also just announced a new Momor Nadon, aka Hammerhead, is on the way too, so they look to be supporting this project well into the future. As for existing items, there is a plethora of figures dating as far back as 1978 that would fit into this set. Way too many to cover in this video, but it is something I'd like to cover in future. That said, Hasbro would do well to re-release some of these figures, such as Lisa Serlin, Herchuk Kalfas, and Riozlia, to name a few, as eBay prices for these are extortionate. The base offering will cost $399.99, with the deluxe set at $499.99, and it won't be cheaper later. The first HasLab, Jabba's Sail Barge, initially could be backed for $500, it now sells for $3,000. This set will not be available at retail stores, so there is no waiting for clearance. It's also worth noting that even if it does reach 17,000 backers and unlocks all the tiers, that's still a relatively low production run, making it one of the rarer production items. Regarding cost, if you're on the fence about this item and have the means to do it, I would suggest backing this project now. Reason being, like I say, these things only go up in value as things go along, so it's going to cost you more to get it down the road if you change your mind. If when it arrives, however, you feel you don't want it, you'd be at least able to make your money back, if not a tidy sum more, as like I say, again, these usually go for more after their initial release once they actually get into collector's hands. For most, the Hasbro Pulse website will be where you can back this item, and I'll leave a link in the description below. However, for some territories, without Pulse, you may need to refer to a local retailer, in the past, sites like Zavi have supplied collectors with a pathway to backing, but I'd check some of the Facebook groups and ask in there for your specific country. I asked a few questions at the end of my last video, and some of which have since been answered. My main question was, where do the band go? Uh, we recently got the Modal Node 7 pack, and I want somewhere to display them. Hasbro explained in a How to Display Your Cantina video, link below, that this HasLab is based on the London filming set, for which the Cantina band were not present, and there was no stage for them at the pickup shots completed in California either. They suggested that your band will fit perfectly into one of the alcoves. This works for me, and as highlighted by Jedi Ryan Custom 73 on Instagram, this set will also include the missing instrument that didn't come with that modal Node 7 pack. While I would still like the band's speakers and additional equipment, I think these can be 3D printed fairly easily. The other big complaints in the community have been around the roof and the floor. Personally, I feel a roof would have been ended up leaving left in the box, um, as I intend to display it so that I can see all of the figures and detail inside, so I can see why that was left out. As for the floor, due to the modularity of this set, including a floor would not have really been appropriate, and it would lock you into displaying it as its full 32 by 19 inch display layout, which for many just isn't practical. The pattern of the floor is 
lots of small squares and can be replicated with plastic sheet as highlighted by Yakface on Instagram should you wish. Why didn't it include lighting is another gripe that I've seen banded around by collectors. And again, this comes down to the modularity of the set. From a toy standards perspective, you can't have wires just draped all over the place. You'd need to secure them within the walls or within the base. And again, that means it can't be modular. Personally, I think the light piping solution works well to allow light into the set and allows for easier customization should you want blinking or sequenced lights. I also like the solution proposed by No Skill Customs in using foam board as a base and running cable where he needs to so that it will be covered up um, by the squared flooring. Taking all of that into account, am I any closer to backing this thing or not? For years, I would thought the way to go with a Cantina playset was release several small sets, one with a bar, one with an entrance, one with an alcove, and then customers could buy as many or as few as they wanted to fill out their display space. They could release these over the course of a year and you'd get your full Cantina eventually in that, that sort of um, lineup. And what they've given us is partially that, but all in one big set. I really like the look of it. I think they did a great job with the fly-through video, gave a great sense of what you actually get with there. Having the painted model on set so that you actually could get a bit of a sense of scale of it, I think all that helped. And then they did the secondary video to actually show some of the different ways you can display it. I think that helped give collectors an idea that it doesn't just have to be laid out in that one big set. All of the video that they've done so far, it's kind of been a bit of a huge dose of nostalgia for me. And it finally gives all of those figures that I've collected over the years a place where everybody knows their name, even if I can't necessarily pronounce them. I think it's a great set. And although the four to five hundred dollar price tag is steep, it's a, it is a nice heavy chunk of change. I will probably get more play value out of this than I will the ghost that cost $500 last year. I hope it makes it to 8,000. I'm hoping that it makes it to 17,000. We'll have to see. Um, but so I'm going to be backing it at the deluxe level and talking it through in this video has helped me come to that conclusion. Uh, I hope it's had a similar sort of effect for you. Um, if it is something that you're going to go ahead on, the crowdfunding project, as I've said, is live. Uh, it currently stands at about 7,000 backers, so pretty close. We're not far off that 8,000. And the way some of the trajectory is predicting, and so a lot of the people that are tr tracking it, it does look to be on target to at least unlock Greedo, if not the other two tiers as well. So fingers crossed, let's get it pushed over the line and we can hopefully see this into its uh, full project and look forward to it shipping in the fall of 2025. That's all for now with my thoughts on this project, but I will be back to look at what figures we already have and still need to populate this project. So you know the drill, like, subscribe and click the notification bell to keep you in the loop. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it has helped you in some way. If you are back in the cantina, do drop a comment down below and let me know if you aren't as well. I'm curious to see why that might be. So uh, what would be needed for you to pull up a chair and back this project? Until next time.